whose needs are we fundamentally trying to serve? The needs of special interests, uh, the needs of politicians, the needs of foreign countries and foreign nationals, and the needs of our own country and our own workers. The White House has released their offer for an immigration deal. Their proposal gives so-called dreamers essentially everything they said they wanted, legalization and a path to citizenship. Not simply for DACA beneficiaries, but for about a million other people and maybe more. So millions of people who broke our laws to get here would receive amnesty. Very few of the president's supporters voted for that when they put him in office last year, and some of them are upset about it. And the left, what's their reaction like? Well, having gotten pretty much exactly what they demanded, they're enraged. Not only is Trump's amnesty offer not enough, they say, it is evidence of a racist plot. According to the ACLU, quote, the only community that benefits from this supposed generosity are white supremacists. United We Dream, that's one of the largest pro-amnesty groups, called the proposal, quote, a white supremacist ransom note. Last night, the president put forth a plan. That plan is a campaign to make America white again. We took those charges seriously because we felt we should, and we decided to take a close look at what the White House has actually proposed. We found that the plan may be many things, not all of them good, by the way, but it definitely isn't a form of white nationalism, not unless that term now has the opposite meaning. Let's go through it. The White House proposal would legalize about two million people who currently have no right to be here. That's a lot of people. For perspective, 13 U.S. states have populations smaller than that. Barack Obama never enacted an amnesty that big. How many of those beneficiaries are white? Now, keep in mind, that would be the central question in any plan crafted by white supremacists, obviously. Well, let's see. Almost none of them. Hmm. Two million more non-white people in this country, that's more than the total population of Delaware or Nebraska, doesn't sound much like a legislative burning cross. But there's more. The proposal would also continue the current system of chain migration until the backlog of applicants has been exhausted. That would take years and years. What countries will be the top beneficiaries of this new arrangement under the Trump plan? Well, if you guessed Finland, Norway, the Swedish national sauna team, nope, guess again. No European countries are on that list, not one. Instead, the plan would admit nearly a million more immigrants from Mexico and hundreds of thousands more from India. Also Vietnam, Bangladesh, the Dominican Republic, and China, the Philippines too. The plan would even bring in more than 50,000 additional immigrants from Haiti, the country the president supposedly hates. Surprised you shouldn't be. No matter what the race baiters on television are telling you, no majority white countries send large numbers of immigrants to the United States and haven't in 50 years. That would not change under this proposal. It's hard to see how a plan that gives legalization, amnesty, and a path to citizenship for more than two million people here illegally, none of them white, is white supremacy. How does that work? Well, I think we have to take a step back and look at this from the beginning. The reason why we're in this chaos situation uh, of, of young people's lives being on the line is because the president rescinded DACA. Well, a small mob of DACA beneficiaries showed up outside Disneyland in Anaheim, California, and blocked an entrance. They chanted slogans and prevented families from entering until law enforcement finally removed them. Imagine what it takes to act this way. You show up in a country that's far better than the one you left, that's why you came here. Wouldn't you be grateful? These people are not. They're angry, they're, they're entitled. They literally have no right to be in America, but they're full of menacing demands. And not just at Disneyland, we've seen a bunch of demonstrations like this all over the country in the last year. People demanding immediate citizenship and the free stuff that goes with it, some of them waving foreign flags. They blocked the entrance to Disneyland, okay? I didn't do that, they did that. Do they bear any responsibility for doing that? And there are Americans who use their right to free speech to block entrances, to shut down roads, and but to protest are... things in this country. Okay. These are young people who are working hard and who no, have worked hard. No, these hard are people who in the middle of a, a weekday to... were blocking Disneyland. So don't tell me they were working hard. So a new poll by, a new Harvard poll shows that four out of five Americans, 81% of Americans, want less legal immigration, a lot less. 
Where were their interests? Where are their interests in the modern Democratic Party? Four out of five Americans of all political parties want less legal immigration. Are you aware of that? Well, and I think that that's really a stunning number, and it demonstrates that we need to do a better job of communicating how important immigration is to our cities and to our country. Do you think it's generous of the United States to give citizenship to people who came here illegally? Do you think it's generous? I don't think that it's generous to oh, separate families and okay. create second-class citizens. It. Democrat Phil Murphy replaced Chris Christie today as governor of New Jersey. And one of the very first things he did was create a new high-profile state agency. Can you guess what it's going to do? The office is called the Office of Immigrant Defense Protection. It'll offer, offer legal assistance to illegal immigrants so they can evade deportation or at least delay it long enough to receive the driver's licenses and taxpayer-funded college aid that Governor Murphy also wants to give them. The governor, I think, today said our plan is to use taxpayer money to help the children of people here illegally go to college. And, my, and I know why it's great for them. I can see why they're happy about it. Why should a New Jersey resident who's an American citizen think this helps him? Could you really be suggesting that we're going to take a half a million people in our state and deport them? Could you be suggesting that we You're take not 11 million because people you don't have an nationwide you don't and have send them an out of this country? Well, nationally, Democrats call anyone who disagrees with their immigration views a bigot. In California, they've gone way beyond that. California Attorney General Javier Becerra is threatening employers with prosecution if they collaborate with their own federal government in enforcing immigration law. If you comply with federal authorities doing their constitutional duty, he is going to prosecute you under California law. We're talking criminal prosecution, fines of $10,000 or potentially even more. And, and this is how far it's gone in California. It's grotesque. At if you obey what, your own and, country's law. Yeah. you got to kind of wonder who is being served by these policies? Harvard has kind of an amazing new study out on attitudes toward immigration, and it shows that African-American voters are among the most conservative on this. 85% of black voters polled by Harvard said, you should not be allowed to come to the United States unless you are bringing skills or money with you. That's considered a fringe view in Washington. Why is this not better known? These views. It's not better known because there's a political imperative in making sure that this kind of information is not gotten out there. If you take a look at all of the studies that show who is affected most in an adversary, uh, adverse way by illegal immigration, without question and by far it's black Americans, particularly black males. Forty percent of the 18-point decline in black employment levels is due to illegal immigration. We're talking, if you do the math, of over a million people who don't have jobs because of illegal immigration and the competition that comes from that. Look, the fact of the matter is there are a lot of young black men and women that have dreams as well. Their education is failing in New Jersey. New Jersey. Uh, um, the unemployment is terrible. You got poverty. That a lot of that money could be going to benefit them. Democrats would rather, despite black folks giving them 90 plus percent of their vote, put other people first before them. Do you think it's despite giving 96 percent of the vote or perhaps because of it? If you think a vote is guaranteed, then why would you be concerned about the worries of those voters. You've already won them over. You don't need to tend to that garden. That's exactly right. But it goes beyond simply the economic aspect of this, which is devastating. We're talking about family formation issues, incarceration issues. Yes. But to take California, for example, it's very difficult to get this kind of data because public officials guard this data more tenaciously than nuclear launch codes. But trying to get crime data on illegal immigrants, and we've done it. We've, we've spent a copious amount of time laboriously disaggregating information. There's at least 2,430 illegal aliens in California prisons today due to murder. On average, we're talking about the state States where we can find this data, mainly the right. bigger states like New York, Florida, Texas, Arizona, and California, we're looking at at least 60% more likely, if you're an illegal immigrant, to have committed a crime of any nature, but uh, many of those crimes are of the most horrific nature, than our lawful residents. This visits horrific uh, implications upon those vulnerable communities. One of well, those yeah. communities is the black community. You know, in California, we've got the sanctuary state, so this is not even people that have come here illegally. This is people who have come here illegally and then are committing crimes while they're here, and then they're being paid for and defended with taxpayer dollars. Many are working in our fields, and our, uh, frankly, our agriculture um, industry would not survive if it were not for the three-quarters of 
immigrants that are working in that industry, just like in many cities. Only about 1% of the immigrant uh, uh, population of the country works in agriculture. So it's discussed a lot, but it's a very small portion of the overall labor force. If you have an overabundance of something, its value falls. So if you bring in a million new laborers every year, what happens to wages at the low end? Do you know? Can you guess? They go down. Well, all of the data is suggesting actually that overall, on the whole, wages go up. How do we suspend the law of supply and demand? If low-wage labor makes you rich, why isn't Mexico richer than the United States? Donald Trump has a very radical idea, and that's that when we make changes to our immigration laws, the group we should be most concerned about are everyday, hardworking Americans, the citizens who make this country run, who obey the laws, follow the rules, pay their taxes, show up and vote, the people who are loyal to this country. And Donald Trump is saying our country should be loyal to them in return. The administration is drafting a new regulation that would penalize immigrants for receiving welfare programs like food stamps, Section 8, Head Start, and CHIP, the Children's Health Insurance Program. The left, of course, is howling. Most immigrant families are on welfare. This is from the current population survey from March 2010, okay? Here are the numbers from Mexico. Mexico is the country that sends the most immigrants to the United States, by far. 74.7% as of 2009 immigrants from Mexico are on some form of welfare in the United States. That's, round up, that's 75% of all immigrants from Mexico are on some kind of welfare. That's ridiculous. There's 7 billion people in the world. Most of them are good, hardworking, decent, honest, principled people. But the reality is there's a limit to how many people any country can bring in. And we as a country have a right to say we want to bring people in based on their ability to contribute to our economy, to be safe, productive citizens, and to uplift the nation as a whole. A majority of immigrants in this country are now criminals. You know that. We've seen the same but I'm not, reports I'm, of the FBI. I'm not saying they are criminals. I'm not saying the majority are criminals. I'm saying the majority are on welfare. And that's unhealthy because the whole idea is you move here and you take advantage of the opportunities. So we're, gonna, we're, we're now going to make it harder for them to assimilate into the country. That doesn't make any sense. Going on welfare is not assimilation. Going on welfare is dependency. Look, people need, some people need to go on welfare. We've got a lot of Americans on welfare. Right. They're, why would we import people from other countries on welfare? That's insane, isn't it? I understand, what you're, I, I understand what you're getting at, but the problem is that the regulations that the president wants to put forth are not doing the point that you're trying to make. The priorities for the administration, you have said, are ending chain migration, financing a border wall, and ending the diversity lottery. Of those three, what would you say is the most important priority from your point of view? Well, look, we need them all because the reality is is that anything you do on DACA is going to have some predictable consequences, right? You're going to have a, an increase in new illegal immigration, so you need to have a wall, you need to close the enforcement loopholes. Um, and then you're also going to have an increase in the overall number of people coming into the country, and that's why you have to deal with chain migration, you have to deal with the visa lottery. Over the last 10 years, we've admitted about 10 million people through our chain migration system. To understand how many people that is, you're talking about every hour, that's about the size of a high school auditorium, Every day, it's the size of a large high school. Every week, a small city. Every month, a medium to average size city. And every year, a very large city, a city the size of Washington, D.C., or almost to San Francisco, every single year, just through chain migration. What's the effect of that on taxpayers? What's the effect of that on wage earners? And guess what? We are now going to punish immigrants because they're poor. They, they now... You mean punish them because they're poor? They're coming to our country. It's not in their country. In search of a better life. And they're in search of a better life and then going on our welfare programs? Are you joking? So what should be the criteria for entry in the United well, States? Well, you know, Donald Trump supported the RAISE Act, and it looked at things like, what's your proficiency in the language? What, what economic skills do you have? Do you have a background in, in sciences? Do you have a background in engineering? Uh, do you have a background in, in, in law or, or, or writing? Uh, it looked at things like your age. Obviously, if you bring in immigrants who are in their 80s or 90s, that's going to have a significant expense on society. So you want folks primarily in their, in their working years. So, so Democrats argue back that ending chain migration and ending the diversity lottery would prevent a lot of people, decent people, from coming to this country. What's their argument against financing a border wall? If Democrats oppose a border wall, they're just saying they want continued unending illegal immigration. So you all sent out a fundraising pitch recently, just the other day, trying to rally Democrats um, to sort of stiffen the backbone of Democrats in the sure. Congress to resist any kind of concessions on DACA. And in it was this line, which jumped out because it's something we've been saying on this show, and I've never heard anybody admit it out loud. You said this, the fight to protect dreamers is not only a moral imperative, it is also a critical component of the Democratic Party's future electoral success. 
The fight to protect dreamers is not only a moral imperative, it is also a critical component of the Democratic Party's future electoral success. Now, right. I, we've said a couple of times that the Democratic Party has basically given up on the middle class of the country in favor of importing new voters, <laughs> and we are denounced as alt-right for saying that. And you were honest enough to admit it in a fundraising pitch, and I just want to thank you for that and for clarifying the terms of the debate.